We're asking the questions you didn't know you can ask your banker. Join us on a financial journey as we help you take it to the next level. Hi everybody, I'm Morgan from the Marketing Department at Valley and I'm sitting here today with Cherry Joseph to talk about fraud protection. Now that so many of us are banking online and we have all of our assets online, we want to make sure that they are protected and secure and safe. So Cherry is going to answer some of the questions that we get in our marketing department for you. So before we start, can you just tell everybody your title at the bank and what branch they could find you at? Absolutely. So I'm Cherry Joseph, personal banker at Valley Bank, and I'm located at our Fifth Avenue location. Cool. And this beautiful location is actually really cool if you're in the area in new york city i highly suggest checking it out cherry and i were just talking about the setup here which i know has nothing to do with fraud protection but can you explain a little bit about this unique setup because i'm used to going into a bank having a really tall teller booth providing like a deposit slip getting my money and walking out right this is really different can you tell us a little bit about this setup and what someone could expect if they came in here absolutely so here at our fifth avenue location we're not your traditional banking setup so we do have a setup where it's more of a cafe style very inviting we've decided to remove those barriers which was somewhat intimidating when we heard the word banking it was very scary so we're trying to be very relaxed very open very transparent with banking and make it very easy to come in and actually speak about your finances. Yeah, it seems super inviting. Yes. Yeah, cool. So thank you for having me. So I want to just start with a general question. Sure. What should someone do if they feel that there has been fraudulent activity on one of their online bank accounts? Like what would, what would be the next step for them to figure out what to do? Right. Now, I know fraud is very scary. So if you suspect you're a victim of fraud, the first thing to do is to contact your bank, whether it be by a customer service, we have a telephone number dedicated that you can call at any time. Um, you can also visit your nearest location. If you do also have your online bank and set up, you have the opportunity to go in and lock your card. So there's no further transactions being done on your card okay. and, um, until we work through that situation. So customers can literally lock their card themselves and feel like at least nothing else is going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. It's instant. Okay. That's really good to know. Um, what are some of the most common types of fraud that you're seeing as a banker? You know, I know that things go in and out of trend. So what's happening right now that is kind of scary to most people? So one that we're seeing currently, I would say, is check fraud. I've okay. a lot of check fraud currently. Okay. And what that means is that a fraudster would get a hold of your check, whether it be um, through the mail or a bill that you paid out, and they would, what we call, wash that check. Oh, wow. They would actually change the name of the pay on that check, change the amount on that check. Wow. And sometimes it's for a larger amount, a smaller amount, and that can clearly go through your accounts. Um, and if you're not very versed on reviewing your accounts constantly online, they could actually get that money. Wow. So, yes. That's, Check fraud is really big. That's kind of scary. Yes. Um, so I guess you would recommend that people log into their online account pretty regularly, look at the deposits as well as the money going out and make sure everything lines up. Absolutely. Um, and again, online banking is a great tool that you can utilize to check your accounts fairly regularly. Okay. So you can get in if you do it at least once a day or every two days. That way, if you spot anything that's suspicious or out of the ordinary, yeah. you can bring it to the bank's attention as quickly as possible. Right. And uh, we could try to resolve that situation immediately. That makes sense. Yeah. So what are some things people can do to help prevent check fraud from happening to them? Yeah. Yes. So some of the um, things that someone can actually do when check fraud would be one, secure your checks. Keep your checks in a safe location that only you have access to. Okay. And that way other people are not able to get into your information or your checks that okay. way. So the person I know in my life who keeps their checkbook in like the console of their car, it's probably a no-no. That's definitely a no-no. Okay, no. yeah. So do, we don't want to keep our checkbook in our car. Don't. Are there any like, I mean, where would you recommend keeping it? Let's say you have a personal safe. That's great. What if you don't have like a safe at home? What are some spots you may recommend? 
Um, if you don't have a safe at home, I would say maybe if you can put it in a book, a book that's not very, I would say... Like something you're opening a lot? Opening a right. lot. Keep it in that book. You can put it in a drawer right underneath. Right, that right, right, right. Some clothes on top. Of okay. It, stuff like that. And then does the bank offer any services or tools so that maybe you can eliminate checks from being written? Absolutely. Um, checks are a great tool. If you can avoid writing checks, I would definitely go against it. Um, we do offer Zelle once, electronic transfers. Okay. So if you have to make that payment, you can utilize that Zelle feature. We also have online bill pay, which is fantastic. What that means is the bank would issue a check and mail it to the recipient on your behalf. So that way your account information is protected. Okay. The checks are issued against the bank's general account. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. And that seems easy and takes the burden and the pressure Absolutely. off. Absolutely. And it's the most secure way to okay. um, safeguard your financial information. Okay. That's really helpful. Absolutely. Um, I just have one more question for you. Sure. What are some best practices when you're setting up a password for your online bank accounts? Like just to keep it really safe and secure, um, what would you recommend? So I know in general, a lot of us would want to make our password very simple, something that we're going to remember. But remember and also that fraudsters and crooks, online banking, hackers, they're really good at figuring it out. Yeah. So make it a little bit more difficult. Use a lot of uppercases, lowercases, special characters okay. like exclamation mark, dollar sign. A combination of that would definitely help. Don't use something very simple that someone could just guess, like your address, your mm -hmm. birth. These are information that anybody can get. So make it very, I would say... Like unique? Unique. Yeah. Unique. A little bit challenging. Even that you have to challenge yourself sometimes yeah. to remember your own password. And I'm assuming that writing it down and putting it on like a sticky note on your desk is probably not the best place to keep your password. Um, I know there are some online tools or like apps now that let you protect your password in like an app so is are those types of applications safe to keep a password absolutely there are a lot of third-party apps that you can secure your information a lot of them would either use um, face id oh, okay. or fingerprint to get into that app to then get your password so it's not some it's not to say that someone can easily access that app yeah. and get a hold of right. your password so you can absolutely trust these apps Cool. That's awesome. That's all we have today. Thank you for joining us. And if you are in the area and you want to talk with Cherry about your personal finances, any topic outside of fraud, welcome. <laughs> Stop into our branch at the corner of 30th and 5th Avenue and call ahead, maybe make an appointment or just stop okay. in. Just stop on in. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Thank you.